And I'm going to switch now and talk about the pseudobutrin fly speck. This is an issue that keeps on uh, happening in the years when we have so much rain, uh, like 2017 and 18. And uh, it seems that we had it quite a lot in the valley. Uh, one thing that I would just definitely urge you to do is use the models in NUA for pseudobutrin fly speck which allows you to put in your petal fold date on average for your farm and then it will give you the estimation how many uh, accumulated leaf wetting hours um, you know how are they how quickly they are accumulating from petal fold on and once you reach this red zone that i that, that is visual, visualized here in this model so this model is free keep, keep that in mind once you reach about 190 hours which is here on this graph on this uh, table it's on july 10th just before that, you should apply a material that is very effective against Sudobotch and fly spec. And as I mentioned to you, QOIs really are the most effective, and also Inspire Super is very effective. So you should probably apply something just before that, you know, 190 hours as a cutoff point when we expect to see infections from Sudobotch and fly spec. So this is a free model you can use, and it helps a lot so that you know approximately after which time you should not delay applying these fungus. And as I mentioned to you, 10th July seems to be the time that you should also not miss for rots. So in this specific year, this is at least for, uh, for our location here where the station is. There's other models for prediction of Sudobotch in this specific case. If you are a subscriber for RIMPRO, and if you are working with me on using the RIMPRO model for SCAB prediction, that cluster of models, for, you know, for the same price you paid for the Apple SCAB model has a model also for Sudobotch. And one an interesting beauty of this model is that it can give you this top graph that you see there that shows you in, in this uh, uh, a green patch up there when the infection has actually occurred and there is actually a pathogen developing, but you can't see the symptoms. You can't see that it's actually there on the fruit. And at the bottom, these red uh, curved lines that you see up there, those are the infection events that happened. So the pathogen starts developing. And in this specific case, you see that infection actually happened on June 28th. So it seems that this year is going to be a wonderful year for Sudobotch and fly spec. At least this was in 2018. And I'm going to show you right now how, the, uh, how the, this kind of a graph looks like uh, for, for the 2020. But um, after this uh, big green patch that you see up there, there's two gray ones on the right side on the top graph. Those are actually the ones that you can see. Those are the spots you can see. So then the model can give away when this fungus is present there and growing, uh, you know, uh, unless, unless you apply the fungicide and you suppress it. So this is a cool part of this model that the newer model does not have. And this is, I was gonna show you here this, uh, again, the first infection in 2020 happened uh, on June 28th, and we had another infection on July uh, 4th, or uh, July 5th, uh, depending on location. So just making sure I tell you that, and that these models are available, um, this one is paid, but if you do pay it for scab, it does pay off also for Sudobotch and fly spec. We do test fungicides for uh, Sudobotch and fly spec control. We tested one for a Canadian company uh, that is called AF Global, uh, organically acceptable product. It didn't seem to uh, control Sudobotch and fly spec, but I wanted to divert your attention to the treatment number five on the right side, which is the grower standard. This is two applications of Captain and mixed with Profite. Then we had four applications of Captain and Topsin. Then two applications of Captain alone. Oh, actually, Captain with Maravon, and then one application of Captain alone. So this totally gives you uh, six, eight, nine covers that we have done. And the reason why I'm showing you that is because if you look at these graphs, okay, this is um, this is how the Sudobotch and Flyspec incidents looked like. So the the yellow bar or the, or the light brown bar is your pseudoblotch and the purple is your uh, fly speck. So we have looked at the incidence of Mac on Macintosh fruit, um, you know, at harvest and the, the right graph is uh, two weeks after harvest. And you can see that the number five treatment, which is on the total right of both graphs, shows you that it's definitely working the best. So, and we have repeated these results not only on Macintosh, we have graphs that show you that number the treat number five you know was best on ginger gold as well, and also on it was very good on the golden delicious as well. So these fungicides are very effective, and you know these new fungicides that I tested the number two number two did not really work well. 
So sometimes this happens in Europe, but we, that's, that's why the research is there to see if we can actually uh, have any efficacy or not with these fungicides. 